number 74 right here. So let's watch them here. Um, so right off the jump, Louisiana, they run a lot of inside tight zone. They, they run some duo. Um, they also uh, run some of those um, windback runs. So that's just in general with their, with their skin. And they, and they do run some counters and darts and, and, and things like, well, maybe not a dart. I don't know if I saw a dart run, but um, they do run a lot of inside, more inside type zones, tight zones, duo, windbacks, et cetera. Um, so for this play, obviously, uh, Mitchell is going to bypass the, the E-mall on the left side because there's a split blocker, um, inside tight zone split blocker. He doesn't have to worry about him. He is worried about comboing to the second level. So that, that is, that is his, <clears throat> that is his, um, assignment. If the, if the three tech were to, um, work his way to, to, uh, Mitchell and not dive inside. He would take him on head heads up. He would be he would be the high leg. He would be the post. He would he he would overtake the entire block. He would climb climb to the second level. But because he expands away from from Mitchell or dives inside, um, Mitchell is going to take his own steps. In Benton system, he wants you to figure it out by that third step what you're going to do. Um, so we have one which is off the instep. Good instep, so you can get vertical on the second step um, and have power and have power. I know. Uh, with Benton, a lot of his coaching, you're going to see, you're, well, you're not going to see it, but he's very big on instep versus toe. T toe, he feels like you can't get vertical. So good job on the instep getting vertical um, with power. Again, he wants short steps, big steps for offensive linemen generally aren't good. So um, we have the first instep on the zo uh, zone. Now, when he works to the, the D tackle, again, the D tackle is knifing inside a little bit. So he's not going to cheat to overtake this because he's going to be working towards him. And then they're both going to be eaten up and not be able to get to, to the linebacker. So um, he does a really good job uh, attacking the hip, which is what you want to do. Again, you want to attack that center of gravity to create movement, you know, attacking high, uh, a guy can obviously absorb that um, and kind of, and kind of buckle down. But when you attack the center of gravity, you're going to move them. So you really, really ideally want to attack that hip. Um, as a secondary blocker here. So uh, Mitchell does a really good job attacking the hip, attacking the hip, but eyes are on the second level. Why? Because if this guy were to um, to eat up space to the line of scrimmage, he has to peel off to pick him up because that's that's what he's looking to do um, as uh, as a secondary blocker here, not the, not the post. So attacks the hip to create movement, peels off with really good timing gets hands on the, um, the linebacker. Now, yeah, the linebacker uh, is able to scrape over the top and make the tackle, but in general, it's a, it's a good block. And there's times where with, with um, Mitchell, I, I keep wanting to call him Herbig. I don't know why. It's really weird. But uh, with, with him, I want it. There's, there are times where I want to see him use his grip strength a little bit more and kind of like run up that tree on guys and, 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 and you know, grab them by the chest plate, um, get those tight elbows, get that lift and drive them there. Sometimes where he's overextending and guys are able to shed him a little bit on the second level. But in general here, it's a, it's a really good block in terms of just chasing that hip, attacking that hip, creating that displacement, and then moving to the second level with good timing. So um, good first play for Max Mitchell right there. Um, now we are going to have a play that is labeled uh, eyes, hands, power step. Um, okay, so I'm assuming there's going to be some movement to the inside right here, and then it, we're going to, or not me, but refer to this as the, the post foot, the kick foot, um, and he's going to power step, so he's going to, instead of uh, moving to his left or moving to his right and back or, or you know, 45 degree or jump set, he's going to uh, power step, which is just this foot staying up instead of dropping the, dropping the post. The post becomes the kick, and the, and the kick becomes the post um, if the feet were just reversed, so power stepping is just keeping that post foot up and stepping inside. So let's see what he does here. You know, good. Obviously good, a good pass rep for him. Uh, yes. The, 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 the sack, um, they do allow a sack from Texas here, but it's not on, on, uh, Mitchell at all. So Mitchell does a good job just reading, just reading body language. So obviously he is working to his, to his right initially, because obviously there's a threat to the outside. Pretty simple, obviously. He gets to the outside, but noticing body language, is this guy rushing right now? Is there a stun? Is he going to drop back? Is he peeling off into his own? You know, what's going on? So he's not necessarily sure, but he knows with that delay, he's not his, he, he's still a primary threat, but he's not an immediate threat at this, at this moment. So he's going to look to his left, obviously, where the rest of the defensive linemen are. Look to his left, see if there's any other threats, because there's most likely going to be some movement here, um, some type of game. So now he's going to power step inside. Again, maintains his feet. 
because um, this is a tight gap. So it's not like he has to drop his post and get completely towards that because it's not like the guard moved completely away from him. If the guard was away from him, he probably he has a little bit less flexibility to use that power step because his hips are going to be locked kind of a little bit to the outside. It's going to be a little bit hard for him to get back to the inside for that guy. But because, again, there's an offensive lineman there, he has some flexibility to do so. Power steps, gets hands on gets hands on they're deflected um by by the defensive lineman he again is not gonna be a guy to necessarily overextend and chase blocks so he's gonna reset get his hands on match him with his feet and um and lock up that blocker again you're, you're always you're and just the little things like you see how he uses his hands just just watch his hands how he's continually working them and he's not and he's not just locked um but he does a good job getting underneath we just talk about getting underneath of guys and lifting and he's, and he's trying to do that with it with his hands so um, good job by Mitchell there. Let's see. Uh, stunt pickup. Okay. Right here. Obviously, we're watching the right tackle again. Let's watch the fight first and discuss a little bit. Again, similar thing. Quick. This is, this is a quick play to recap um, because it's very similar to, to the last one we just watched. Similar thing. So the thing, the thing I will say, you, you can see his feet are a little bit clunky. You see, you, you can see the post steps a little bit more clunky. You really want the post, that, that post foot. You want a lot of that weight on, on that foot on the inside leg. Um, and when, when he's lifting it up, like he is, it, he's not able to change direction as, as quickly. You want that foot really low to the ground, barely coming off the ground because you can, then obviously you can move um, really quickly, just like we talked about with receivers, you know, tight ends, whatever. Um, but when it's coming up high and it's clunky, it's, it's going to be harder for him to re redirect and get inside or, 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 or just change his, his foot or his, his foot placement. So um, you got to, again, want to watch that, that foot a little bit. It is a little clunky. It is, it, it is raised a little bit, but in general um, here, he does a good job staying square to the line of scrimmage. And when you're saying square to the line of scrimmage, what does that help you do? It helps you flip your hips to get back inside. Um, if there is a stun, a game or anything like that, when you see guys open too, too, too quickly, obviously they can get beat with power. They can get beat to the inside and they're, they're displacing themselves in terms of playing um, games and stunts and things like that. So good job saying square to line scrimmage. Good, good job. Um, good relationship between, between his outside foot and, and the um, defender rushing up the arc. Now Herbert, or not Herbert, say uh, Mitchell notices, okay, he's starting to delay and, and move inside when he's moving inside like he is. What does that usually mean? Usually means he's the looper of a stunt, um, this time a TE stunt, and he's going to look for the, for the T of the TE stunt, the penetrator. So he's going to, now he drops his post. You see how last time he, he, um, he used that power step, but now it happens a little bit quicker. So now he's forced to drop his post. So that's what that's we're talking about, power stepping versus dropping his post. Now his post foot becomes his kick foot, and his, and his kick foot becomes his post foot. So, so I'll uh, you know, drop the post when you hear me say that. So he drops the post gets his hand inside active drag hand that's already there lands into the chest the left into the chest which is good and then he's going to um get into a position to, to just obviously cut off that block and stay and stay in front of it um and then obviously you know gets thrown a little bit but he's able to maintain his balance and get back on that block so it's a really good block again um by mitchell and that stunt pickup it's the little things i always tend to uh record a lot more in the beginning um, then much less at the end. There's like games or like the first, the first game I, I was recorded like 12 games and like, sh or 12 plays. I'm like, shit, I have 10 more games to go. If I, if I keep up with that pace and I'm going to be 120 play review and I really can't do that. So um, I tend to record a lot at the beginning. And I would say this one, even this one and last one, uh, and even the Clemens one, I, I say a little bit more positive. Um, I'll talk about the negatives, but the negatives are more boring with offensive and defensive linemen. So again, I, I kind of talk about them and show them in the middle of good plays as well. So um right here uh pass rep right tackle Let's see what happens again another another good play um by him the one thing the one thing that i like too is that he he's he's getting he's getting into into his um into his vertical set i like that he consciously is trying to stay inside again it, you know Create that space, dictate it to him, make him beat you around that arc. Don't, don't let him get inside on you because that's obviously the quickest pass to the quarterback. So anything you want them to beat you outside in. And he does a good job um, staying inside out here versus outside in. And you see that drag hand. He doesn't, he doesn't want to create too much distance and just leave this massive gap. Because if he feels something here, he's going to take over that block. Maybe, you know, that kind of – not it's not a true molly, but they molly it. He gets outside. Uh, but he stays inside, drag hand, good job staying, again, on the inside. Once he feels that nothing's there and this guy completely commits to the arc, um, he commits to the arc. Good strike timing. 
boom, good strike timing. Um, I would say like, like the most perfect hand placement, and it obviously depends on where you kind of are, but most ideal hand placement is this hand outside peck, and then this hand is, is, is going to come for like that clamp. Uh, like that half moon punch I talk about is more over the top. Um, which is more of like a, like that um, like almost like that hug technique. The clamp is more like un, un, more of an underneath tight angle um, that just contains him to the inside, almost, almost like a tight hand on an outs on, on a zone play in the backside, which we'll talk about. Tight hand um, versus catch hand, which Benton teaches. Catch hand is basically um, if you don't have help on like, on like the back side of a zone, or even on the front side of a zone, if you don't have help, and you're playing a guy who's in, who's who's a gap in front of you, and you want to reach him, if you're taking those steps to reach him, and he knifes inside, that catch hand is going to come a little bit wider. So you catch him with that. You literally catch him with that hand, and you and then you redirect almost almost like a uh, like you're dropping your post and you're gonna, play, you're gonna play that. But if you have if you have that backside help in Benton's scheme, he, he he refers to it as a tight hand. So that hand instead of instead of catching and being wider now, it's gonna be tighter because you have that backside help. So if he's if if he's gonna knife to, to, to that side, okay, you have a guy to help there. So you just pop up that shoulder and assist that guy. But you're not catching him. You don't want to be caught up in that block. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's I'm fine with that. The text man like that. So. Nonetheless, that's for more run blocking, but just in general, you want to set outside hand, outside peck, but in general, it lands on his chest. It's, it's still a very good play. Um, lands onto the chest. You I want to see him be a little bit more balanced after that and be able to um, shuffle and, and, and have a little bit of arc, arc, uh, arc in his back and a little bit of more bend in the knees. He gets a little bit off balance, but he's able to maintain it, um, pop up that near shoulder, um, almost like he's wrenching him and uh, block him for long enough, obviously, for the quarterback to get the ball out right there. So um, let's see. Quick to the second level, um, fifth play here. Again, we have 47 plays. Some of the other thing, uh, shows, like I think I have really long ones with uh, – I think Reed is 67. I think Tomlinson is 67. I think uh, Uzama's upward, like high 50s, Conklin's high 50s. Uh, so I got some, I got some uh, marathons coming. So right tackle right here, uh, quick to second. So let's see here. Um, this one's pretty simple. Again, he's because, because it's a zone opposite, 